Hello, Billy Ho here. Uh, just a little quick hitter video uh, for before we start tomorrow's Honda. A few things I wanted to go over. Uh, the weather looks fairly benign once again. I do think you might have a small chance to do a little bit of wave stacking. And if I had my druthers, I would go a PM AM wave, uh, mostly because they're <laughs> Most of the guys I'm playing are PM, uh, but the this is a this is actually a, a showdown pool for Friday that I think might be pretty good, and it's the afternoon wave Thursday, and it goes something like Norin, Vegas, M, Louis, Matt Jones, Dan Berger, Killa Keith, Chris Kirk. Seifert and stump the Schwab, Matthew Schwab, kind of low key there. Uh, that's just kind of something I was interested in because they're actually going to be starting Friday on number 10. And uh, I believe one of our dudes in the, in the discord had mentioned that he liked kind of guys starting on 10 Friday. That way, if they're struggling to make the cut, they don't have to deal with, the back nine bear trap and all that tough closing stretch. They can maybe give themselves a chance to uh, get their cut on uh, a few late additions to the field. Uh, I just, I cannot resist playing just a little bit of Patrick Reed. He is sub 5% everywhere. I look, nobody's talking about him. His game is shit. He can't hit it off the tee. He can't hit his ass with either hand. He can't hit water if he fell out of a boat. He can't hit the broadside of a barn with a buckshot. You know, it, all this other shit. Well, I don't know. Probably so, but it's worth the risk to me. Sooner or later, the guy's going to get everybody. So I'm going to give him a shot this week, hoping that the smaller course and maybe – you know, his game getting on. He did get accused of cheating once again last week for some stupid ass reason. Uh, he was wiping his club off on his inside pocket of his white pants. And why anybody, I don't care if you're fashion or not fashion, are out playing golf with white pants, that's dumb. You're going to get dirty. <laughs> white pants are dumb. Anyway, uh, adding a little read, I kind of swung a little of uh Shane Lowry's way as well. He just kept showing up on model after model, tough courses, short courses, this that and the other. He's comfortable here, he makes cuts here. Maybe he'll have a higher finish. Uh, the the 36s and the 30s for his price aren't quite optimal, but I'm going to give him a little bit of look. As I mentioned earlier, uh Chris Kirk, I've kind of landed on a little bit He's showing up. I think he's due for a good round or two. And adding a little bit of Alex Norin in. And uh, also fading 10K. Uh, I am playing like Sung Jay. I'm playing Brooks. I'm playing Neiman. Odd man out will probably be Berger. And I'm just going to have to hope that the back is still in his mind in his mind's eye because he may not be hurting anymore. But as I tweeted, I've had back injuries. And when you injure your back and on a golf swing, especially for a professional golfer, I kind of think it gets in your head a little bit to where you're not so sure the next swing coming, don't tweak that back again. And it messes your form up. So we'll see. I'm going to uh, bring up the shared screen here real quick and uh, just show you a couple of little quick uh, back end of models that I ran. All righty. This is uh, my last six months recent form, and it's basically the stats that I think are most relevant here. And if I remember right, these are the stats that I ran up against Individually, I didn't clarify that much, but individually, you can click on each year. So I ran individually 2018, individually 2019, individually 2020, 
and 2021, each by themselves, 50 FedEx players. This was before the actual field came out. So I needed to use, picked out the winner, number one in three out of the four years. And I believe the year that Keith Mitchell won it, he kicked out like, I don't know, third or something. Brooks was second. I think Brooks, uh, that, that year he came in second. I think he was the number one in the model that year. But, he, but it was pretty accurate as far as like pegging the top 10 guys and whatnot. So I wanted to get down in here in salary a little bit and just uh, have you guys take a look and uh, some of the guys we got here. Sebez, uh, Christian Bezadenhut, uh, he ranks 32. And I think that's appropriate because the guy doesn't really, he's not a, an immense DK score, but he is really consistent and he's really safe. And no man is safe, get me wrong, on this course here. But at 8K, he's kind of a, like a linchpin to me. And, uh, of course, Taylor Moore is ranking up there. Denny McCarthy's ranking up there. But what I like to do with these stats here is single out somebody in the really high, you know, one or two stats. Because once you get down here, these guys are going to start looking real shitty. But if you can find a guy who's – third in par four scoring or fifth in DK points or, you know, something positive about where they've been the last six months, then, you know, they're a guy you can play like Aaron Rye, uh, top 10 in approach 21st in DK scoring 16th in GERS gained 11th ball striking 16th total rank. That's solid. He, uh, he, he really landed on my radar uh, with those kind of stats. He's got some pretty even stats. And uh, the putter is the only problem, but we know how volatile the putter is. Anybody, anytime. Uh, Charles Howe the third. I just don't like his recent form. He is a uh, guy I love to play. I mean, he does have around, I mean, around the green game, but the DK points at 12 is nice. And inside the top 20 and par four scoring and right inside top 25 everywhere else. But these are stats. He just disappointed me. He gave me a bad taste in my mouth when I trusted him last time out. And he just flunked. And this is just a little further down, same model. Uh, you can ignore the stars. I did a great addition. ZJ, I mean, you can see his recent form. You know, it's been absolute crap. But sometimes these shorter courses, he can get his groove on. Swafford is the guy who's just stat model god. You know, of course, he's got a win in here that helps. But – uh the approach game solid, Gers game solid. I mean, he's going to be popular for a reason. Looking down here, Davis Riley. Some people are talking about Neesmith. I I'm kind of indifferent on him. It seems like every time I play him, and he looks good in the stats, and he's got the Gers gain, and he's got the DK scoring and approach, and then he misses the cut. So I don't know if he's going to miss the cut this time. Probably because I'm not playing him. He'll make the cut. So go ahead and play. Fire him up because I don't have him. That's a tout for you, huh? Uh, stats in here. Tita Green, ball striking, strokes gain approach. Not so much on the DK scoring. Uh, what you want them to do is really make a cut. If they give you any kind of upside, you're, you're for somebody sub-7K. And uh, looking down here, Hayden Buckley. Uh, I couldn't quite pull the trigger on Buckley. I think his his stats are masked by a couple of real strong performances. Kadira would be, might be a good play. I, I was tempted to roll with him. He seems like a good course fit. Ryan Armour as well, playing really well. I think I actually clicked his clicked his name after I looked at his stats a little more. And even the last two tournaments he's played in, he's been really good. So he, this is a, kind of his jam, hit fairways and greens and just pray to God the man can make a putt. This I didn't mention the other day. I did show it to you, but it is just basically a little, a tiny little uh, mixed condition model that I ran. And it basically is ball striking and positive Bermuda putting put together. And I did a 70-30 split and a 50-50 split. Usual suspects showing up here. But a few guys on here that I, that I kind of like to see is like guys like Smalley, Cameron Young. You know, I, I'm going to give him a just a sprinkle just because I don't want to miss out on him in case he brings it again. Because like I said in my video previously, the man doesn't just grip it and crack a three iron off a, off a tee dead down the middle of the fairway, 275 to 285. You know, he can he can get it done in more than one way. Uh, Cbez is always a great putter. And uh, this is a course I think he can handle uh, being such a, a short-ish hitter. You know, you can see Killer Keith on here. Uh, Billy Ho. 
everybody loves Billy Ho this week. So, you know, holler at your boy. Give me a like and subscribe for my namesake, Billy Hustle. Well, ho hopefully he uh, he comes through for, for somebody. And uh, I'm going to polish it off with this. Like, subscribe. I love you guys. Welcome back, Anz. And this is Billy Ho signing off. Peace.